Hello everyone, welcome back sa ating channel. This is Joel Pasqua and for today's video, we are going to discuss another concept under community health nursing, specifically your community health nursing too, which is your health indicators. But before we proceed to the actual discussion, guys, thank you very much for supporting my channel and don't forget to subscribe. Kung hindi ka pa subscriber, hit the like button, comment and share this video as well. So, for health indicators, guys, this is a very important in community health nursing, especially in the population base for community as an entire client. Why? Because this would be the basis. These health indicators would be the basis uh, uh, in the creation of programs and, of course, even in the implementation, even in the purchasing of logistics specific for for the implementation of a particular program. So, nakabasi po ang mga hakbang ng ating gobyerno sa mga statistics na meron tayo. And these health indicators would uh, show us the entire uh, or show us a picture of what is the current situation of the community and what are the existing community health problems. Now, let us define first what is health indicator. According to the book of Maglaya, health indicator is a list of information that would determine the health of a particular community or a country. So, when we talk about health indicator, this includes um, your population size, your crude birth rate, death rate, infant and maternal death rates and neonatal death rates and even your tuberculosis death rate. So, kung gaano kalaki ang ating populasyon, gaano kabilis ang pagtaas, that's your period birth rate. So, when we talk about crude po pala, we are referring to the general population. Crude death rate or mortality rate, so yung gaano karami ang namamatay and gaano karami ang namamatay sa mga specific age groups such as your infants, maternal, and neonatal groups. And even yung mga namamatay sa mga specific diseases such as your tuberculosis, COVID-19, and etc. Okay, yun po yung dahilan. Health indicator is the reason why we have yung mga tinatawag nating top 10 morbidity and mortality in the Philippines. Now, for health indicators to be more specific in terms of numbers, okay, papasok po dyan yung tinatawag nating vital statistics. So, vital statistics is basically the application of statistical measures to vital events. Vital events, example po niyan is yung mga pagkamatay, panganganak, okay, pagpapakasal, uh, migration, or anything that could affect the population. Okay, at pag in, in, uh, uh, if we apply statistics into these vital events, okay, um, in, into these vital events, uh, we are referring to the vital statistics. And by the way, when I talk about vital events, the registration of vital events should be done in the area where the vital events occurred or kung saan nangyari, dapat doon ang registration. Okay, for example, kung ikaw ay buntis at ikaw ay taga Pangasinan, pumunta ka ng bagyo, nagturista, pero naabutan ka ng iyong panganganak, yung live births ng anak mo ay irerehistro sa Baguio City at hindi doon sa Pangasinan. Kasi noong nanganak ka, nangyari yun doon sa Baguio City. Same goes kapag may namatay. Kahit hindi siya taga doon, pero doon siya namatay, sa lugar na yun, doon ia-add yung kanilang, uh, doon ia-add yung census ng pagkamatay ng specific na tao kung saan siya namatay. Okay? So, that's your vital statistics in relation to vital events. Now, vital statistics is utilized to gauge the levels of health, illness, and health services of the community and the country. So, basically, your vital statistics will give us a picture of what is really happening in terms of the level of health, illness, and health services of the Philippines or of our country. Now, when I talk about... Um, Vital statistics, this can either be your fertility rate and your mortality rate. Pag sinabi natin fertility rate, this uh, specific vital statistics adds sa population natin. Obig sabihin, tumataas or lumalaki ang population. While pag sinabi naman natin uh, mortality rate, yun naman yung nagbabawas. Now, let the first part ng ating video na ito, i-discuss natin on how to compute for fertility rate. Now, there are two uh, specific types of fertility rate. We have your crude birth rates and your general fertility rates. So, what is the difference between the two? Parehas po sila na nagtataas or nagdadagdag sa population natin. Let's go into specific for us to differentiate this clearly. 
So for your crude birth rate, guys, crude birth rate measures one or measure of one characteristics of the natural growth or increase of a population. So it measures the increase in the population. And for us to better understand this, this is the formula. So your crude birth rate is equals to the number of live births in a, in a year over the media population of the same year times 1,000. By the way, in some books, baka makita nyo hindi media population, baka makita nyo is estimated population as of July 1. Parehas lang po yun. Okay? So the 1,000 number here, it's constant number. So, rate po ito. So, we have to consider yung time in place, okay, noong rate na tinutukoy natin. For example, sa Pilipinas at kung anong taon. Like, for example, we want to get the crude birth rate sa Pilipinas noong 2021. Then, we have to get the total live births on 2021 over the median population or the July 1, estimated population as of July 1 in 2021 then multiply it by 1000 for example the total population in the philippines in the year 2020 is 109,543,263 the total live births on the same year is 1,900,250 so the question now is what is the crude birth rate so first things foremost we have to what Substitute the value. So the formula is the total live births, which is 1,900, 1,900,250 live births over the mid-year population, which is 109,543,263 and multiply it by 1,000, which is a constant number. Now, for the CBR, so 1,900,250 divided by the 109 million 543,263, which is the estimated population in 2020, that would give you an answer of 0 0.017. And if you multiply it by 1,000, that would give you an answer of 17. So how are we going to interpret this data? Therefore, if the CBR is 17, the interpretation is that there are 17 live births in every 1,000 population, and sa tulad sabi ko nina, I apologize, di ko nalagay dito, you have to consider yung time and place. So, there are 17 live births in every 1,000 population in the Philippines in 2020. Yeah. So, that's the correct interpretation for this crude birth rate. If you do have questions here, further questions, kindly please type it in sa ating comment section. Another one, still under your fertility rate, is your general fertility rate. Your general fertility rate naman po, compared to CBR, is more specific. Why? Because it is related to a specific population that are capable of giving birth. Kung mapapansin nyo kanina doon sa ating crude birth rate, binase natin siya sa actual population natin, which is the total population of 109 million plus. Okay, the thing is, hindi po naman yung lahat yung 109 million plus na yun is may kakayahang mga anak tulad ng mga sobrang bata at sobrang tanda na. Okay, kaya hindi po ganun ka-specific ang resulta ng inyong CBR. Now, if we want a more specific um, estimation of the total birth rate of the Philippines, okay, Ang gagamitin natin is your general fertility rate. So your general fertility rate po kasi is based on the population that is considered as fertile or may kakayahan ng mga anak. Zero po yun. Sila yung mga 15 to 49 years of age na mga babae sa Pilipinas. Again, 15 to 49 years of age which is considered as the women of reproductive age. Now, the formula for this one is the number of registered live births in a year over the median population of women under the age group 15 to 49 years of age multiply by the constant number which is 1000 for us to understand this better let's go to example so general fertility rate for example there are a total of 1 million 900 1250 live births in the in the year 2020 and the population is 109000 543 and 109,543,263. So there are 52,580,766 women on the same year and 
27,000 plus of that belongs to the women of reproductive age. So, ganun pa rin po. Let's substitute the number, the total live births, which is 1,900,250 over the estimated population of women of reproductive age or ages 15 to 49, which is 27,341,998 multiplied by the constant number. So, if we're going to compute this, that would give you an estimate the uh, computation of 0 0.069 okay, multiplied by 1,000. So the general fertility rate for this specific situation is 69. How are we going to interpret this? Therefore, there are 69 live births in every 1,000 women of reproductive age in the Philippines in 2020. Again, General fertility rate is more specific compared to crude birth rate because this general fertility rate is based on the actual population that has the capability to give birth, okay, or mabuntis, or yung age group na fertile, which is the women of reproductive age, ages from 15 to 49. So we're going to cut the video on this part. We do have a second part of this video. So in second part naman po natin, we are going to discuss the mo, uh, the mortality rates. Okay? And uh, masyado po kasing mahaba yun. That's why we cannot concise this in one video. So I hope uh, i-check nyo na lang po sa ating description box yung link ng next video natin. I'm, I'm going to sure make sure that I'm going to attach the link sa ating description box. So if you do have any questions or a particular topic na gusto nyo pong i-request, don't forget to comment it down sa ating comment section. And again, please subscribe, like, and share this video to your friends. See you in my next video, guys. Thank you very much.